My name is Nyale. My name is Mikaele. And we're the bots. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me backstage here at Shindig. You guys have certainly got the buzz going around you right now. How surreal has it been? I mean, you shared the stage with so many artists. It's wonderful. You know, Jane's addiction, and you got Larry's, Larry and his flash, you know, Fishbone's on right now. It's a lot of good bands on. And we played with a lot of fantastic bands as well in the past, which kind of just end up naming the same groups, but it's been awesome. It's been a wild ride for sure. Yeah. So it's what can week. you share with us with what you're working on right now? Well, we have a new album coming out next month, October 14th, called Pink Palms. <laughs> you know, we're touring right now. Going to be touring all through November, you know. Bit, a little bit in October, we're doing a tour right now, you know, into October. So that's what we're doing right now. So, you know, can you talk a little bit about the recording process for the album, maybe one or two tracks in particular, and tell me what the mindset was like? There's we talk about when we did, um, when we went to New Mexico to record. That was cool because we had no real... Oh, no, wait. Well, yeah. Wait, El Paso, sorry. El Paso, El Paso Texas. Texas. Whatever. We, we came through there. Um, it all felt the same for a minute. But it was that was a very interesting recording experience because we kind of came in with no real direction. Nick, yes. uh, Nick Zinner from the Yeah Yeah Yeahs was helping us produce these couple, like three songs. And um, it was just like jamming. He's like, we just wanted to jam out songs. And we, we came up with songs that we kind of wouldn't have if we sat in our bedroom together and wrote, or if I wrote it, if or not, I wrote it and showed it to me. It was like, it kind of happened because of the time and place that like influenced our, our writing. And staying up to like three in the morning every day was also a part of that, but it was interesting because like I had a song we in mind called Side Effects that we play today and um, writing it writing it, kind of fleshing it out there was way different. We didn't really know what we wanted out of the drums and Nick had really big I, I didn't even know what I wanted. Yeah. When I, we, I thought we were recording our songs that we already had yeah. and he's just like, now nah, we'll, the only we'll, song we had. He was like, we'll record stuff later. Let's just jam right now. Let's just so, jam. Right now. Jam. That was what was different. When we recorded beforehand with uh, Justin Warfield from She Wants Revenge, it was more like bringing songs that we had made together or worked on and brought it to the studio to flesh out. And then created a couple songs there in studio, but the experience was very different. Um, I mean, every everybody's recording experience is different. and. Um, no, it varies. It varies where you are, what time. I'm sure that becomes a character too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you're recording something at three in the morning, you've got this different mindset. You've got a different vibe. You kind of hear, like, it's like to me when I listen to certain guitar parts on the record, or like certain elements in the album, I could almost recall exactly where I was or what I was thinking at that time. I can remember, yeah, times I was shirtless, times I wasn't. Yeah. Times I was wearing pants, times I wasn't. You're like, yeah, I recorded that drum fill without pants on. And I was like, okay. I can, I, can recall, I can recall that, you know, it's, it's fun. because I recall him being naked pretty much recording most of the drumming. And I wore like two sweaters and a jacket in the studio yeah. all the time. That's crazy. It's going to be like the next little tidbit that ends up on the Wikipedia page. Like, what were they wearing? Like, you know, he wasn't actually naked. Half of it was, uh, not naked, but you know. Yeah, yeah, there was time. Times. There's times pants were off, there's times shirts were off, you know. All there's the time. times it was at 2 a.m., there's times it was at, you know, 1 in, one in the afternoon. And it's just cool to be able to think back to when you listen and, like, certain bits that we recorded, like, oh, I know that that came from there and what, you know, it's just like, it's fun for us. Nobody else that listens to the album they would know that. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of like an inside, like, you know, I know it, Mikai knows it, Justin knows it, um, Nick, no, Nick knows it, you know, whoever, their sound engineer, Charlie knows it. I mean, you bring such a variety of styles to your music. Like, what influenced you? Like, when did you first get bit with the bug that said, this is what I want to do? We didn't actually, you know, because we were, well, I mean, I guess we were trying to, but, you know, in the end, we were just like, well, let's do what we want to do, you know? I guess that's, you know, that's choosing what we want, but what we wanted to do was exploring sounds. different sounds, different genres within the rock category. A lot of bands. You know? like a band very much and just kind of emulate that style of music or try to sound like their favorite bands and that's not what it was about for us we were at first we I mean right at starting the band I had no idea really what we were doing it was always, it, a it was always a, yeah always experiencing new things and that was great developing our sound through the process of trial and error which I feel like a lot of bands today don't really necessarily give it that amount of time to discover who they really are as musicians 
not to put anybody down, but it's like it's a lot of bands that will just come out of the woodworks and they like we're a metal band and we're just gonna play metal. That's our genre. Like you shouldn't limit yourself to a specific genre or say that when I'm gonna sit down and write a song, I'm gonna write a metal song because that's not how music is. That's not how good songs are written, if, in my opinion. They should come naturally and be let the song tell you what it wants. Absolutely. I mean, I know, in my opinion, I feel like genres tend to matter less now. Like, it doesn't, I mean, you could be a fan of absolutely anything you want to. I mean, even these festivals are testament to every type of music possible. It was always before. It was more exclusive. I mean, I, I wasn't even alive, really, when it was, when it was more stricken to, like, I don't know. You're right, though, it was. It, it's great, because, I mean, we started playing Vans Warped Tour, and... Early to, I mean late to. That's like boot camp for bands. Look how it kind of is. That let us. That was like, dang it! I don't even want to be in a band anymore. But I was like, it, it was great because that was the first time I had seen like hardcore, folk, hip hop, and all sorts of genres at one festival, and everybody seemed to enjoy it. It was, it worked, and it's not just like when you go to Ozfest. Which Ozfest still exists today, and it's just like they're booking like Motorhead and. But it's heavier bands. It's specific to it's that genre, and that shouldn't matter so much. And it doesn't. Like people were when I was going to school, like middle school and even high school, kids were like very tight with certain cliques, and it's like almost embarrassed to admit that you like Fleetwood Mac or like other music. Like you did school kids. Yeah, really no, that's my point. Like kids that. wouldn't admit that they like certain genres or like pop or whatever. It was just like, yeah, man, I'm cool. I like, like. You know, EDM, like cool electronic music, and that was like all the kids were into. Are like, yeah, man, I listen to punk, and the kids were exclusively punk, and they didn't listen to anything. I feel like rock is starting to slowly creep back in and make a comeback. We're trying to do that ourselves. Especially, we don't... yeah, I mean, like with bands that aren't afraid to experiment with the genre a little bit. I think fans are like incredibly hungry yeah. for something like that. They want, really yeah. So that's what we're trying to be, you know, the Crusaders, I guess. <laughs> we're trying. We're really trying to, yeah. It needs to, yeah, that's true, and you know. Every single song is you yelling at the top of your lungs on the mic, it gets a bit old. And I don't mind some of those songs, it's kind of cool to have those dynamics, but if you play one of, like, a crazy punk rock song, and it's like, kind of a slow rock, and then maybe, like, a blues tune, and then, you know, slow it down and bring it back up, there's a wave to it. You take people through a sonic experience. Music should just be, like, up here, it should kind of, you know, have different levels. It shouldn't always be full blast 24-7. There needs, there needs to be more to it. That's exactly why I look at it as a universal language, because we can all speak and understand it, even if we take different messages away. Is there anything you do hope that listeners will take away from your music? That, that they find something that they like, and they stick around and continue listening to what we have to you know, put out. That's, a, that's something that, that definitely is important, you know? It's very important that people take away the, I mean, the experience in itself, like whether or not I feel like I've played my best show, I always try to have the, a fun time and, and perform for the audience. And it's, it's a matter of like putting on a show. A lot of bands perform today and they just play their songs live. And it's like they'll stand there and they play it well, but there's no performance aspect. Your energy is great on stage. It's like what, you know, what goes into the live show, getting geared up for that for you guys? Stretching. Stretching. I carry around a bag of Gigi Allen's poop that I bought on eBay for $5, and I sniff it before each show, and then get the powers, and like, really, like, oh, freak out. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then I go out and rock. <laughs> nobody makes jokes, like, nobody says anything stupid anymore, but it's just like, yeah. I drink tea well, and like do. <laughs> that's what he does, you know. This is this is this is he this stays is. out of my business. I say that's you know I stretch with them. We stretch together. That's a true story. Yeah. That's that witchcraft stuff. You know that's a different story. Yeah. He, he, poo -poo voodoo, you know. That's what I'm calling it. He keeps that voodoo. Poo -poo voodoo. You keep that to yourself, bro. So what would be the most surprising thing? Is there anything that you know when you look online and you read about the band? Is there anything that's misunderstood or that people get wrong? I try. I, I don't look though. Ignorance is bliss. Is for me. I try not to read things about myself, but I always check my emails and like our manager will like, hey guys, you just came out in this magazine. Like send me the link, and I'm just like, oh, I see it now, so I have to like click on it. I want to know, but I don't want to know. Yeah, it's, it's, you can tell my um, loads of stuff. You know, there's a lot of stuff there. What this shouldn't matter, you know. I'm just saying this age. It really shouldn't matter. They always incorporate age to you know, and it doesn't. It, it, Do you feel it out, almost turns like into a novelty? 
it's I mean people people are trying to you know we're getting we're getting we're getting older so it's kind of harder to you know he's 21 I'm turning 18 in November you know we'll just be a younger, after, after that we're younger dudes yeah. in the band yeah, well yeah. we're not like when we started I was like you know doing like the 16 and you know like 12. Yeah. that's like you need the, the, you know we're not trying to be a novelty band we never were trying to be a novelty band we just happened you, to start at a younger yeah. age but yeah. we want people we wanted people then to take us seriously and they did I mean, a lot of people would mention Asian. It's not really so much of a deal until they make it a big deal. And then for some reason, race. Yeah, race. I was gonna I say always that. say like two black kids. I'm like, we're half Chinese, and they're like, oh, but that shouldn't. Two that's brown it. kids that play punk music, and it's like, it's not. But punk. this is. But this is. It doesn't even matter if it's if it's a punk or not. It's just the fact that. <laughs> the race is an issue, and that it shouldn't be an issue. That's like one of the ones I talked yeah. to Pharrell Williams a while back about, like the same thing. But like we were talking about how why should that have to matter? Like in music, as far as the genre gets, if you're making good music that people want to listen to, whether it's rock, hip hop, EDM, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna say that about a Caucasian Nobody ever band. No one no one mentions that. But when it become when it when you get a couple people that are ethnic, a little, little more ethnic, a little more, little more racial, it's, it, and then it becomes a problem, or it becomes a, you know, oh, this is something you don't see. Well, it is something you see, you know, this we is... an interview where the interviewer had said that, mentioned, like, oh, you guys are two black kids from L.A. that play, and I was like, I corrected him after, I was like, we're half black first off. He's like, oh, like, what do you... What kind of Asian, like Japanese? I was like, you can't just start assuming it's because said Asian, but no, it's like, you're, just, you're two black kids that play garage rock music, which is typically played by 35 year old men with beards, and like, I was like, middle aged men with beards is like kind of their genre. Why, why you guys decide to play this? And I'm like, their genre, that's kind of, that's kind of, that's kind of racist. I'm like, we're from LA. Do they own it? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, but it's not like I don't I don't take it so seriously because I know that that's ignorance and it's like it's their it's but them I'll, not I'll, being I'll, educated. You know, I'll correct someone that that does say that. You know, yeah, if they, they if they they says you know I'll mention it because it's, if it's not being mentioned, it's just gonna be a, like a silent thing that just happens over and over again. You know, yeah, it's got to be known at least. It's just them being ignorant. If you don't know better, if you're to say that out loud, it's it looks bad on you because you. It's not. It's, it's not about that. I'm curious because I know, like you know, the days of the internet being so prevalent in the music scene, like people just put a lot of junk like out there. It's right bummer. Yeah. It bums me out. It makes me think about the way we've recorded this album, which is I'm very happy with the album we had just recorded and it's produced lovely. But there's a lot of it's produced like a lot of albums in 2014 have been. It's on Pro Tools. It, Anybody can make anybody could buy a MacBook and it comes with GarageBand and essentially then you could start making music and put that on the internet. And there's so much junk. It makes me think that like I want to really earn my writing experience and for the next album I I, I want to write. I'm gonna take it back like more of an analog recording maybe you style. Tape. No, yeah, do maybe, tape. Maybe we'll do awesome. Tape. I've heard a couple bands recently doing that. Yeah, and the, it's the band off. Um, you know this. You know the they. The last album they put out. Actually, I'm wearing the shirt right now. No, this yeah. album was on. No, me, me, no, no, no. Actually, no. Sorry, this album wasn't on tape. I don't think. But the latest album they just put out was recorded on tape. It gives that it perfectly in oh perfect sound. Yeah. Yeah. And then you could you could you could take that you could take skill. that though and make it digital if you wanted to. Yeah. yeah. It's you know you mix that stuff, but it makes but, it you know. It, it's you earn your writing experience. A lot of people say don't bother with it or whatnot. That I've talked to musicians, and it's just like it's ever you could tell. It's like the drum sounds sound different. Like think about how when Led Zeppelin recorded. Yeah. Compa yeah, you could tell it's different and. And I want to make something sonically different and texturally more interesting. I want it to be something I'm very proud of and and just not use plugins, not be so easy to achieve the sounds that everybody is it's readily available. It's like Did you have any material left over from the recording session? Oh we have a we have a lot of you know, we're gonna probably like fifteen songs and they only use ten. But even that we still have a lot of material that right is just now. We were writing, but we have a lot of material that we just have songs that I'm forgetting we had that are we you know we might put out an EP in a couple months you know and then come the time around we're gonna put out an album. A lot of artists are doing that now. It's almost like the you know the album will get its steam and then it's like a little bit more of a taste of like a dessert. Here's the EP. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we plan on doing and like because of what I was saying before, I want the writing on the next anything else we put out from this point on to be more dependent on the, the classic songwriting, not it being that 
your production sounds amazing because you have like these crazy effects and all these other things smoothing it out and making it sound lovely. I want to be able to take away everything, be able to play a song on an acoustic guitar and it still be a hit, more or less. Like, I listened to um, Creep by Radiohead acoustically the other day and it, it was just him, acoustic guitar and vocals and it's such a, you could tell from there, bare bones, before they built up the track and put distortion and drums, it's an amazing song right there and that's what I want uh, the album to depend on is classic songwriting, just it being a good song minus the the plugins and all the. I'm excited to hear that. Yeah, definitely, excited. definitely. Yeah, we're really excited. <laughs> a true representation of what we really are as a band, and it's not to say what we're doing now isn't it. We've experimented with a lot of more technical, like technology and and its technical aspects. Yeah, we experiment it. It's the it's the, an expression I heard before. It's like the musical mayonnaise. When you it's like when you're making a tuna fish sandwich and you put mayonnaise on in it, you can't take the mayonnaise out. It just keep on. There's loads of layers of musical mayonnaise, and I don't want it to depend so much on I don't even like the mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Yeah, I, I eat dry. <laughs> You know? So, is there any big plans for release day? What are you guys gonna do? Yeah, um, we're, we're planning a release show right now. I don't think okay. we're not even supposed to say anything about it, but we're planning a release show. Okay, no, this is like red dot. Oh no, no you, could, you, could, you could you could air that, but I mean, because we don't, we, it's not quite yet announced, but we got we're doing a release show. We got interview. we're touring a lot in November, like around. West Coast a little, West Coast a little, middle, like, you know, Colorado, we're going up to, like, Seattle, you know. Okay. Um, so, like, Pacific, North Pacific. Yeah, yeah, more, more, more on that side, and Texas, down, down south. So, doing Texas, because we're doing fun, fun, fun this year. We're doing a bunch of Texas, uh, a bunch of Texas shows. So, you guys think you might try and hit the festival circuit in the U.S. again, like, next year? I mean, you did more tour, but... We'll always be, always be back. Once we've hit one spot... That we haven't been to, you'll definitely. See I want to hit. Like I want to hit Lollapalooza. That's Obviously. that's in Chicago, right? Yeah. Maybe pitch, Lots maybe pitchfork. Oh, wait, no. A lot to, you know, you never know what your future beholds. There's hit a lot new, of people. Hit new continents, for us. maybe. Oh, that'd be awesome. I really want to. I said Australia. continents. Yeah. I want to go to Australia. Yeah, crazy festivals down there. Do. I would, I would love. I would love to go to South America. That'd be. That'd be cool. You know. People love rock and roll in Brazil. But they, they love. Like that. They love rock and roll. Maybe Antarctica. You know. Play to the dolphins and the, <laughs> the penguins. I want to thank you guys so much for taking a few minutes to speak with me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Very you. Nice meeting you.